Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquigums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of Ancient Frontier Steel Shadows. It's by Fairweather Studios and it released on December 11th, 2018. And I actually have the original Ancient Frontier in my Steam library. It's been on my list of things to cover and do for, well, over a year now because I'm a terrible human person. But they decided they were going to give me a second chance and let me cover Steel Shadows. Now, I've already done this video, guys and gals. So I've learned a bit. I've already watched the tutorial. I'll explain some of that stuff to you in a moment. But I had a hard time doing the recording the way it was supposed to be done. Because OBS and the Ancient Frontier Steel Shadows game did not enjoy working with one another. Anyhow, Steel Shadows is a standalone RPG set in the Ancient Frontier world. And it is a lot of fun. It's definitely something up my alley, up the channel's alley. So you guys will really, really enjoy this, I feel, I think, anyway. Uh, there's a lot to learn, a lot to do. I have a little bit of experience because I basically played for half hour. I watched the tutorial. I would play through the tutorial, but it's only basically a video that just kind of explains everything. So I've watched it, and I will try to explain stuff as we go. Anyway, I don't want to take any more time. Let's hop in and begin, shall we? All right, we have three different uh, difficulty settings. We have the beginner, the veteran, and the epic difficulty settings. For players that just want to play the story, resource management and battles are easy. Definitely want to go that route, not going to. We're going to go with the veteran difficulty. For experienced players of this game or the genre as a whole, damage is permanent and strategy is important. And of course, if you want to just die a lot. The hardcore player looking for a challenge, damage is permanent, resources are scarce, we're going veteran. Alright, I will play it and treat the game like it is an Iron Man mode, but just so I don't lose any... Well, just like uh, right now, we've lost the first episode. I'm redoing it here. But just in case any file gets corrupted or there's sound issues or whatever the case is, a video issue, I don't want to possibly lose footage. So I will be treating it as an Iron Man save thing, but I'll be making individual saves in case I have to go back and replay an episode because of a corruption or whatever. So you'll see all my dumb mistakes. Don't worry. In standard mode, you must save your game manually. Autosave is off. All right. I feel like this is worded strange. I feel like autosave should still be on in standard mode, and you have to save it manually, but Iron Man should say only one autosave is all of all that's available, or something along those lines. It's only on one save file, and you can't manually save it at all. It's it's fine. Or maybe just say manual save is off and autosave is on. Eh. Anyway, standard save. And you'll see here this is this is where we were at. So we're just gonna save over this one. Uh, and I did some testing today. I think, yeah, it's the same date. So hopefully I'll get this out on the right day. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so the game is a lot of fun, but there's going to be a bit of story here. This is the Sphinx calling Rickshaw. Do you read? Corker, are you there? By the machine god. Rogan, is that you? I thought the feds locked you up and threw away the key. Yeah, well, they they probably did. I'm surprised to see the rickshaw in one piece. Why are you still flying that old bucket of bolts? Bucket of bolts? You should show some respect after all this ship has done for you. Look, Rogan, I don't know how you found me, but you picked a bad time to come back. My associate and I raided the wrong convoy, and now we have a small fleet of ships on our tail. It's a bit awkward. Heh, <laughs> just like old times, eh? Battle stations, I'm going in. I like the new guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this chaotic and crazy monstrosity that is known as Ancient Frontier Steel Shadows. We um, we are these various different ships. I'm not sure what the green versus the blue means. It could be different ship type, but I don't think so. I, I don't know. I do not know. But there are more enemies than just that single one there. So, movement is independent from actions. So we have, like with the rickshaw right now, we have two movement, and we have three actions. So we can move, move, and then shoot. Um, and we also have these various different abilities that we can utilize. So we are selected on that one. Can we select others? No, we have to go by, oh yeah, it's initiative order. So right here. So I'm actually gonna try to roll out and take care of this guy. And it looks like I will be within range. There is cover behind asteroids and things, too, which is kind of interesting. Charge shields, hack. Targeting computer, eh. Overdrive will allow you to get going a little bit faster. Um, 
I think we're gonna use the anti shredder. Um, yeah, the anti shredder cannon, and it's gonna annihilate those guys right away. So they're down and out. We don't have to worry about them anymore. All right. So throughout this entire area, we'll zoom out. There's this is kind of the edge of the map here. This is the edge of the map on this side. So all up over here, there's a fog of war. So there are ships kind of scattered throughout. There's also various resources and things that we can pick up. Up here we have Hydrium. Hydrium is used to build and repair ships. It's also used as the main form of currency. We have the Proto Energy, which is used to power ships and colonies. Ships must have power in order to be deployed. And Data is used to purchase technology and research and stuff like that. So. We'll get to all that stuff a little bit further down the line. Right now, we are going to end our turn with our boy there. We're going to try to move together, trying to do some sort of protective maneuvers here. I don't want to spread out too far, because if you do, you could walk into an enemy or fly into an enemy, I suppose. And I'd rather stay close to one another, if at all possible. And keep our troops ready to go. Okay, let's see if the enemy makes a move into our range. They've all moved, but none have actually become available, or visible rather, I should say. I still am not seeing anyone. Okay, we see our first enemy over on that side. Uh, not much we can do right now, so we're just going chill. What does this do? I thought we had one that was evasive maneuvers right here. We could do that. It's got a five turn cooldown, but it'll just make us a little bit harder to hit. So we'll go that route. We'll, we'll zoom in a little bit. We'll pick up some data there. Okay, I think that's fine. I kind of wish they would have made it space bar to end your turn as opposed to enter to end the turn. And we're within range. They will take a couple shots at us here, or at least a single shot. Which, you know, is not great, but it's okay. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to attack straight up. Oh, we missed. That's unfortunate. Try again. We missed both shots. That is unfortunate to be sure. Well, I'm going to go with this. And we're trying the same thing we did before. Yeah! The rickshaw is doing work. So I need to protect that one if we don't want it to die. All right, I think I'm going to move here and take the Hydrium. Is that what it was? Hydrium, yes. Scan the area of the map to reveal anything hidden by the fog of war. Might as well do that. I don't feel like that's a bad thing. All right, so there's another group up there. They have shields up and ready to go this time around. All right, so continuing to maneuver along... Make sure we stay kind of near the front lines a little bit. About over here. I'm gonna try to sort of hug the one side. We're also gonna up our shield capacity again if we can when it's our turn. Once more. I think I'm gonna move here. All right, we see another uh, ship there now. So we know there's someone off to the side that way. All right, so just slow and steady. I'll charge the shields. I sit on the back end just to make sure we don't get caught. Be as defensive and safe as possible. I think that's gonna be the plan moving forward. Like I don't want to be. Trust me, I don't want to be safe or defensive. I want to go full crazy and just do murder, but doesn't seem like it's the play. All right, well, looks like I don't know what that was. I have no clue what they just did. I'm going to roll out here. And they do have shields. I'm going to hit them with the ion cannon, try to remove their shields. 79% chance to hit. We missed. Of course we did. This is me we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. I am a bumpy, miss everything with RNG McSquiggums. It's, it's a very long name. Not necessarily a very good name, to be honest, but... Alright, we're overdriving so we can go a little bit further. 
And we're going to hop up right there. Hopefully not revealing too much beyond where we're at. And we're going to take a shot. It's not going to do a tremendous amount of damage, but it's it's some. There's some damage there. Once more this time, I'm just going for the resource. Oh, we had a... Oh, yeah, we have objectives up here. So I think the optional one was to pick up like four resources or three or something along those lines. Um, we have to destroy all four of the enemy targets, and then all the heroes must survive. Is kind of where we're at. All right, so that's cool. We're gonna end our turn there. Looks like he's gonna get to move. I'm not sure what the glowing thing is. Oh, he took a shot at one of our main guys, and he missed. All right, we're gonna move out over here. We're gonna take a shot. We landed it. We're gonna be able to shoot a multitude of times here. Roll out again, and I suppose we can just go like right there and just take that shot. Oh, we missed the final attack. That is unfortunate. We're gonna go here, and down they go. Then we're gonna move here. Take a shot, and what do we have? Eh, these are fighters, aren't they? What are they? They are fighters. Do we have anything that's fighter specific? This is for anti-escort. I mean, maybe it works. We'll try it. There it is. All right, we see another enemy just popped out from behind there. That's fine. We'll roll out here. Not quite far enough. Fine, we'll end our turn. Oop. And I clip I clicked off of the Sorry guys, let me just do this real quick. Um I could have sworn you know it's fine. I could have sworn there was an option to lock mouse camera stuff. It's fine. It's fine. How far out can it to basically just as far as I can move, huh? Okay, I'll go to overdrive side of things. This is fine. Oh, I think I've made a terrible mistake. Evasive maneuvers, and our shields are fine for now, so... We can change the, you know, the setting, like whatever plane of existence you want to be on. You can be on it, and it's okay, and it works, and it's sweet, sweet, nice style. I'm going to go here as a defensive. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I kind of wish I could undo that at this point. Again, evasive maneuvers. Mm. I don't know exactly where the rest of the enemy is. I, I sort of want to go all in on this guy. But at the same time, I know that that's probably a mistake. So I, I can't in good conscience and do it. So I guess we'll scan over here. So one of the cool things about this game, as opposed to several other games that have shields involved, so you see there's shielding. We will always take at least one point of damage, even with the shield up. So you will still be doing some hull damage, no matter what. Which is nice. Sometimes that's not the case. Alright, we're going to get you up here as well, as quick as possible. I'm going to be tardy to the party most of the time, unfortunately. This should do some work. Blow that up, do a bit of damage to you. I think our Viper can sit on the front lines pretty comfortably. A little bit of damage there. I don't know that I necessarily want to overdrive all the way over there. But I do, but he's going to get to move first. We're going to try to... Okay, he's doing the same thing that we just did. And he charged his shields up as well, so... He's feeling pretty good about himself. Yeah, he did, he did some work. And that's okay. So that's a targeting computer. I just wanted to see what that did. Alright, cool. Now you're going to roll out. Oh, you stole one of our resources. Oh, we still lost somebody. I was so careful, too. Man, that's unfortunate. I was really hoping I'd get through this without losing anyone. 
I feel quite bad actually by the, all this. That is going to do some work. This is going to hurt, and it's going to kill him. Quite bummed out. Really, really, really thought we had that. All right, 90% chance to hit. I'll take it, and then we're just going to follow it up with a double shot. Mission successful. And there it is. Unit unlocked. The Puma Ghost Bonus Wing got destroyed. Aborted. It's unfortunate. Bonus was aborted? Is that what it said? Is it because I lost someone? Is that what happened? Zero enemies remaining. Alright, so one of our groups did get destroyed. We get experience gained on all of our guys. We got HP, we got our rewards up here, mission, bonus experience. We got to live with the choices that I've made. Ginger Ivanov, uh, gunner, veteran who operates the main guns, increases accuracy and critical chance, capitals and escorts only. Plus 5 to HP, plus 6% accuracy, 2% crit chance. Okay. Promotion earned, salvage gained, damaged fighter shield matrix, okay. An additional shield projection matrix boosts shield power, but it drains energy, designed for fighters. And some long barrel guns, tier 1, long barrel weapon modifications increase the range of a ship's main guns at the cost of damage. Eh. I don't actually know how these things work out yet, so. I was much slower my first time around. I can't believe you're out here in the flesh. I never thought I would see you again. How long did the feds have you locked up? Too long. A lifetime. We lost the war, you know. Not long after you were captured. Yeah, I heard. Even in the box, word like that gets around. So, what are you doing out here? Looking for you. The infamous old man Corker. Not a lot of people call me that anymore. I'm afraid it applies even more nowadays. All these years of spacing, I feel it's in I feel it in my bones. I'll never be able to land planet side again. Never say never. Let me get cleaned up and we can talk about old times. Alright. Cool. Well I'm glad the recording seems to be working fine now. That that really that was a bummer because I was gonna have it up about three days ago and Nope. Nope, couldn't do it. Alright, so it looks like it didn't necessarily matter that we um, that we had some people die because I felt like all of the, oh, maybe, maybe the blue ships are the only ones that were ours and the others were like extras or something. I don't know. I haven't quite figured it all out yet. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff to unpack here and I think we'll do some of it, but we'll go through each thing and I'll try to explain as much as I can remember. So again, we have the, the three different things that we can use for various different things. We can research here. There's also a research tab here. Basically, all the stuff that's up here is also available over here. So real quick, we'll take a look at the missions. All right, there are story missions, there are bounty missions, and then there are simulator or simulator missions or simulator missions. So the story missions will obviously advance the storyline. You'll get resources and experience being able to do that. The bounty missions will not get you any experience, I believe. I think you don't get experience on bounty missions. I think that's how it works, or maybe you do. I'm, I'm not entirely certain. I do apologize. But it's a much smaller amount of experience if you do get it. And it, I think the experience comes from doing like the, the missions, the objectives and things. But you will get rewards for you know uh, different resources that you need. So if you need resources, you want to go for bounty missions, and if you want experience, you're going to want to go for the simulator missions. These don't have any rewards except, I think, things that drop off of enemies you might be able to pick up. And even that, I'm not entirely certain. Also, any damage that is done to your, your ships are not permanent. So as long as you successfully complete the mission, all your ships should be restored back to full. I believe that is what was said. Also, I should probably repair these guys. You would think that I'd know how to do that. I totally don't. Or maybe none of them got hurt? Oh, yeah, I think none of them actually got hurt. Okay. Alright, then the market. You can buy a whole bunch of stuff. You can buy additional wings that you can deploy at your leisure. And you'll see there's several. Then I'm not sure what the problem is here. Oh, we just don't have the, the resources to, to gather up these. Okay. 
Then you have the research. This is going to be the thing that I'm probably going to look into a bit more before I do it. So I won't be doing the research this episode. However, there's a lot to unpack here as well. So equipment research tree. I think I can click on it or right click. or Oh, it tells me down here. Uh, research tier 2 armor unlocks fighter escort capital armors for purchase in the store. So essentially you'll be able to unlock these and then purchase them. And then when you have them and you apply them, they go to all of that ship type. So anything that you had before, anything that you're getting, anybody who joins you that's the same ship type will get all of the updates, which is really nice. Shield matrix, shield generator. Uh, I'm not sure what a generator does exactly. You have weapon systems, so on and so forth. Then you get to break it down into individual things like fighters. And then into the fighters, you have interceptors, raiders, and gunships. And then you go to the escorts, you have the smugglers and the rangers. Then for capital ships, you have the steel clad and the cruiser. So there's a lot of stuff to research. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to check out and read. And we'll go through these, you know, bit by bit, piece by piece as we go, just so you guys get an, an idea. But I'll probably come up with a plan to start with before I, you know, fully commit to anything. Uh, enhance shield projection matrix. Increase interceptor shield points by plus two. I mean, it's going to be a lot of that, like dodge boost, initiative boost, things of that nature. Another interesting and different thing for this game with the initiative system is uh, the turn order is based off of the initiative system, but it's also somewhat randomly generated. So the, the higher your initiative, the more likely you'll go first, but not guaranteed. So there's definitely an X factor, a lot of variables inside of these things. So I mean, the tactical upgrades are all pretty stock standard, and it looks like... A lot of the um, a lot of the other stuff is pretty stock standard too. Action point upgrade. Ooh, I like that a lot actually. That might be what we end up going and doing, but maybe we'll get some of the armor and stuff first. And then capital ships got light torpedoes, uh, shield boost, and an additional armor. Okay. All right. Obviously, save game is save game. New quest. It just shows. Oh. So there's quests, there's going to be things that pop up that you can do throughout whatever missions you're doing or something you can do within the um, this menu here, the Between Missions screen. Hire four new crew members, there is much to be learned on the frontier. Increase our ranks with more specialized officers. Alright, so we're going to go with our fleet first. And we can hire crew members here. Um... I think we're going to give it to her, or to this. I'll go ahead and throw her in there. Did that change the look of the ship? I feel like it did. Can I remove you? It does not look like I can remove you. Well, that's somewhat unfortunate. Really? I can't re Oh, maybe... It... What if I wanted to move you? Else? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that was, that was weird. I just reset the, the position. Sorry, guys. I'm still, I am still learning stuff. All right, so we're going to want to get a few extra things. All right, so these are interceptor wings. The hull is 12, the shield is 4, 2 and 2, 18, two, 18 and 12. That is a bit better and less likely to get completely annihilated. The raider wing. I think I'm going to buy, we have one of those. Um, maybe I'll buy a pirate gunship. We'll buy one of those. And that was pretty much most of what we can do. Alright, let's see if we can't buy any crew members. We could, but they cost way too much right now. Okay, so bit by bit we'll have to figure this stuff out. 50 data trade good. Trade goods can be sold for resources. Sell this for 50 data. Oh. That cost us 75. Okay, so basically a way that we can trade... Um, 75, like if we have an overabundance of one thing, we can trade it for other. That eh, makes sense. I, I, I don't hate that. And then down here we have some actual other things. Fighter dumb fire torpedoes. Uh, seven energy deploy cost. One slot, okay. I don't hate that. Fighter sensor probe. Remote probes can be deploy cost usually goes up. Fighter Shield Network Tier 1. I think I might go with this. 
Okay, then we're gonna go back up to our fleet. We have our fighters here, our Jaguar a wing. And what are they looking at here? Hull points 25, their shield is 10. What if we then, how do we outfit these? We go to items. There we go. And slot one only, and there it is. So we just increased the shield by five, and it's now got two shield regen. Okay. I like it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, in the next episode, I will pick a research, and we will actually launch out into probably one of these other missions. Hopefully they're not too terrifying. There are higher threat levels down here. I feel like that's not something we'll do. So we'll probably launch this bounty mission right here. Raid an, out, an outrigger fuel factory complex. It's easier than normal. So it should work out pretty good, I hope. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for the very first episode. I'm glad that we got through it. I'm glad the recording is working. If you guys want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links and things of that nature. Like it always is. Like it always is, guys and gals. If you did enjoy the video go ahead and give me a thumbs up give me a like i appreciate it it helps a lot comment down below let me know your thoughts on the game i know it's a bit weird i am still kind of scrambling struggling pulling in information i might not have explained anything 100 percent so if you guys have any questions go ahead and ask and i'll see if i can't find the answers or explain it a little bit better in the future and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this and tons of other tactical turn-based strategy games and just other stuff in general until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.